Hi guys, my name is Steven and today we're going to talk about how to make backgrounds and gradients and basically how to add some flair to your user interface. So we're going to start out by looking at the previous uh, user interface I had made and I just want to point out a few places where I've done this. So first if we look at the status bar I see that it's got like a green background and this black gradient that comes in from the left and right. Over here I see a gray background with rounded corners and I see that there's a bit of a light gradient towards the middle. Uh, there's a gradient here in this page left to right. Uh, even in these buttons I see there's a gradient from top to bottom where it's got a bit of a shimmer in the middle. If I go over to this other page I see that these three main gray windows all have gradients from the top to bottom. And so that's what we're going to look at today. And it just adds a little more uh, interest and depth to your user interface. So here I'm going to jump over to my code. And I've gone back to my template. Uh, so if you've been following along with these tutorials before we made some buttons and labels, I've gotten rid of all that. So we're starting from scratch again. And that'll just help this be a standalone tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create anything but we'll start with a label uh, and of course as always I'm going to use a float layout to put my widgets inside so if I want a label I'm going to use a MD label and I need to add a few properties so I'm going to add the text and call it label one and then the other properties I need um, this one is horizontal align, so H align. This one will essentially center it. Um, and then I need a size, actually a size hint. We'll give it 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And then a position hint. We got this kind of a list for uh, syntax here. So for my, I'm gonna do it a little off center to the right. So I'll go three quarters for that direction and then I'll center it in my height. So 0 0.5, okay. So that should be everything we need to take a look at what we've got so far. So I've got a ROS core running and I'm just gonna launch my launch file all right, so I see I've got my label and it's shifted over to the right by 0 0.75. That's exactly what I wanted. All right, so what we're gonna talk about now is how to create a background for that label. Uh, so I guess something I need to introduce is this concept of a canvas. So every widget has a canvas and the canvas represents the background of your widget. So it's the same size of your widget and it has the property of color um, and then you can add certain things to it, such as an image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna access the canvas property. And the canvas property has two sub properties. One of them is color. Uh, the other one, there's a couple other, but first we'll talk about rectangle. So for color, I need to specify color um, in the RGBA format. And this just happens to be the syntax you use. Um, we'll start by just applying some kind of dark color. So actually we'll make it black with a low alpha. So that should make it appear as kind of a transparent gray. Uh, rectangle, rectangle is important um, because this basically is where the canvas will show up. Uh, so actually I think we can probably take a look at this if I I think I can run this now. We'll see if it shows up. Yeah, okay, so this is what I expected. So basically, I've got my canvas, but it's not centered on my label, and that's because I haven't given it a position or a size. So for the rectangle, um, I'm gonna give it a size of, I'll say self.size. <clears throat> basically what that means is it's gonna grab the size of the widget of MD label and just make the rectangle that size. Um, and then the same with the uh, 
position. So I'll just grab the position and set the size to position. So let's run that again. So now this helps me visualize basically the size of my widget. So right now I said 0 0.3 in each dimension. Um, I could change that if I wanted my height to be smaller, maybe 0.1. You know, as you're building your user interface on some of these objects that don't have backgrounds, that kind of helps you give an idea of actually how big these are. Anyways, uh, I think the next thing we probably want to talk about is adding rounded edges. So at the moment, we have a very rectangular background. I mean, it's just a rectangle with these sharp corners. So let's say we wanted those corners to have a radius. So under rectangle, there's a property called radius. And you gotta put your value in brackets. Um, and I think the range is something like one to 100. A uh, range of 25 makes a pretty ad adequate radius. So let's look at that. Oh, actually, looks like I have a problem here. Radius 25, let me take a quick peek. Oh, okay, yeah, so <laughs> basically there's a different type of rectangle. There's a rounded rectangle. So a rounded rectangle um, allows me to specify a radius, which makes sense. All right, so now I've got my rectangle with these rounded edges. Um, you know, one thing you gotta realize is that that radius is kind of proportional to the overall size. So when your widget does get small, it can kind of change the overall look of your widget. It can obviously do a lot of rounding there. Um, all right, so the other thing I'd like to talk about is adding a gradient to the back. So actually what we'll be doing is we'll be adding an image, but the image will happen to be a gradient. So to do this, we need to access the source property. And all we got to do is give it a file path. Um, now this file path should be with respect to your main home directory. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and type up what my file path happens to be. Uh, so I got a workspace called GUI workspace. It has a source folder and then there's a tutorials or tutorial folder in there. Um, and then let's see, I'm looking over here. I see gradient.png is what I'm trying to access. So gradient. PNG. So before I run this, let, let me actually navigate there. So GUI workspace, source, tutorial, gradient PNG, and we can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, and this is a transparent PNG, uh, and that's important. So basically I just Googled transparent PNG gradient, and I found there's so many variations, but this was one variation I wanted. Um, so anyways, you should be able to run this. Uh, one thing we'll notice is it is dependent, since it's transparent, it's dependent on the background color. So I don't really see my gradient. Uh, and that the reason for that is because my background is so dark to begin with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lighten up my background. So we'll go to the extreme, all the way white. Okay, so now that it's all the way white, I see that my gradient is very, has a lot of contrast. So typically you want to go somewhere in between that. So we'll go 0 0.5 for the alpha. All right, and so I see now I have a label with a little bit of shimmer to it. And typically what I'll do is I'll tweak these values till I get it the way I want. All right, so earlier I said every widget has the ability, or every widget has a canvas. Uh, so let's take a look at another widget. We'll look at the MD raised button, which is just the standard button. We'll give it some text. Button one. It also needs needs a uh, site and a size and position. So we'll give it about the same size, and for the position, we'll move it to the left hand side of the screen. So 0.25 in the X. So let's go ahead and look at that. All right, so I got my button there, and you can see it has a little bit of shadow to it, and that's just the default, which is nice. That's why they call it a raised button. 
All right, so now I want to edit my canvas. So what I can actually do is I can grab the same canvas I got on my label. And once I make sure all my indenting is correct, um, let's run that. So now it should have a canvas. Uh, and I believe we'll have to do some modifications to this background color again, but we'll take a look. All right, so I can see it applied the, it applied the gradient and it applied basically these rounded edges. Uh, the problem is the button does not have those rounded edges. Uh, so I guess what we could do for this raised button, we could get rid of the roundedness. Let's run that again. All right, so now we got a button that looks pretty good. Um, I would probably tweak that alpha a little bit I'd probably make it a little darker. Or actually, I'd probably make the color a little darker. So let's do an extreme example and cut it in half. All right, so somewhere between those two might help you have the desired amount of shimmer. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put that back how it was. All right, the one other place you can apply canvas is your layout. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna apply it up here to my layout. Now it's important to get the right amount of tabs in there. So canvas will be a property of this float layout. So it needs to be one tab in. Um, I'll give it the same gradient, the same color. We'll see what it looks like. All right, so now I see my whole screen basically has a gradient. Um, so you, you kind of just tweak these until they look good. Um, you know, now that we've seen this, uh, if we go back and look at my user interface, we can see like, for example, this gradient is in the other direction. And the way I've done that is basically I have a few different PNGs I call from. So let's go look at those. So I've got a bottom fade gradient, I've got this kind of top and bottom gradient here, and then I've got a left and right gradient here. So this left and right gradient is what we see here. Uh, and you can see with a little bit of care you can make these gradients gentle enough to where they're not distracting, and they look pretty good. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if there's any videos you want me to make, uh, if you have any ideas on that. And then also uh, don't forget to subscribe.